there and welcome to my first video of 2022. It's fun to be back making these with you. Today I have some simple cards that aren't really always that simple to make up. Sometimes we see a design and think that it's fairly minimal on the page but getting a balance right and creating those elements sometimes has more depth than we notice. So today I am bringing you three cards with the same basic design, but which have come about in different ways. I'm starting off now with the Plentiful Plants Bundle, and I'm just going to stamp these up and make this my most simple of the three. I'm using the ink pads to stamp the images direct from the stamp set, just as they are. I've chosen Pacific Point and Old Olive as my colour palette for this uh, card. I'll be cutting out all of the images today using dies because I really want a crisp look. Fussy cutting looks great, but it works better if the piece isn't the only thing really on the page, which is what our design today is going to be. So you can see that I can cut these three images out in one go by placing my dies and stamping just a little farther apart from each other and I can run it through my machine in one hit like that time-saving capacity. Instead of perhaps just using one of the leaves I've laid them up a little just to give extra bulk there and it doesn't take much to stick it all together with a little bit of liquid glue and then when you place the dimensionals on the back to pop it up on the page it will also help keep things in place. Today's cards are going to need the Stamparatus. This is an essential tool for us to have the placement of our sentiment pieces right and I will use it for all three cards. The Stamparatus is a wonderful addition to your craft room. If you don't have one, I cannot highly recommend it more. Make sure that you pop it into your basket. You may, if you haven't already got one, like to consider making it part of a starter kit and taking advantage of the celebration offer at the moment where not only do you get oh, about $65 worth of free product when you join Stampin' Up, you also get to choose two stamp sets of your choice that are current. So you can choose any two that you like and also add those in free. So you can see what I have done now for the Stamparatus. I have popped in my base card, lined up where I wanted to put that sentiment piece. It adheres to the clear arm that you see me moving down. And the sentiment stays on that arm. What moves now is the card. You can see that I've brought it down um, by a notch on the backing paper is there to guide me. The grid paper allows me to see a nice amount of intervals that I can shift that sentiment piece down and by lining up my card always on that left hand line that you can see me aligning to, then I'll know that it's always straight. I tend to go for six sentiments um, stamped for this design. It just gives a nice balance before I pop my colourful piece of die cut on the top. This is the first option. I'm going to show you how to make um, two others, but that colourful um, image piece that we're going to do is really what's going to change between the three. Using the Timeless Tropical Stamp Set, I'm going to colour directly onto my stamp. I've grabbed my Many Marvelous Markers and you can create different colours on the same stamped image by just colouring directly onto the stamped image as you can see me doing. I'm applying at the moment a base layer on which I will just add flicks of colour from the other greens that I'm using to create a little bit of a multicoloured uh, effect for those tree leaves. Give your stamp a bit of a <sighs> before you pop it down. It just reactivates the ink if it has dried out a little bit. Fantastic tool that you can use time and again on loads of stamps. It does work better with rubber than our photopolymer. Now the last little trick that I wanted to show you for colouring in is 
using the Butterfly Bay Brilliance bundle. You can see there that I have already stamped up and kept aside a lot of butterflies because this stamp and die work that I only need to have uh, one go through the big shot and I get all of those butterflies perfectly die cut out in one hit. But you can see that I've made a couple of these cards and I always want the same butterfly. So I've got some left over and I just pop them back into the stamp case ready for when I might need a die cut image of those beautiful butterflies. Now the trick for today for this um, colouring in is to use your blender pen. So I used markers for the last card and now I'm going to pull out my blend pens. I've got the colours aside and I'm also going to be using the colour lifter. The colour lifter is going to be really our colouring tool if you like. It does get a little bit messy and you will see that it cleans off at the end, but I recommend perhaps having two colour lifters, one for this type of use and the other one when you're just uh, perhaps lifting the colour on an already coloured up image. The way it works is pick up some colour with the colour lifter directly onto the, the nib. It doesn't take much so I recommend having some scrap paper on the side that you can perhaps uh, colour off a little just while you're getting used to how dark it originally is. But because it's um, an alcohol marker it will move around when you put that blend on top. So as you can see when I'm putting down the colour it will come out a bit darker at the start and then I shift it around the page as I blend and it softens off. So it's a really easy way to get used to blending with our blend pens and it just creates a different look. It's much much softer than if you were to create directly onto the image using those blend pens. That is also a stunning look. It would give a much bolder looking butterfly, but I wanted it to be more subtle. When using this technique, when you're finished with a colour, just keep colouring off on the side to get rid of that colour from the blend pen, that colour lifter pen, and it cleans off really well and you have no colour left then. Even if it sort of seems to be on the nib, it will dissipate. Because we're going in really soft with these colours, you can go back and brighten them up. Less is always more in this technique. With any technique where you're adding colour and blending, always do it in gradual stages. You can never take off colour and then you can always put it in. It's like salt. I have finished off this card by adding a layer of Wink of Stella. I love having a bit of glitter on the page, it's subtle, but it does just highlight those colours. You can see them coming up just a little brighter there and it gives a nice shimmer to the butterfly. I also really like to separate the antenna of the butterflies from all of these steps. So I always take my snips and just separate those with a little snip down the side between the antenna and the uh, butterfly itself. You don't have to do this, I just think it makes it look a little more real. And then I give soft score lines around the body of the butterfly so that I can make it, its wings sit up a bit. The sentiment for this card comes from the Daisy Lane stamp set. And all the supplies that I've used today are in my blog, so make sure you hop over there so that you can see exactly the colours that I've used and which stamp set and bundles. Thanks so much for joining me today and for seeing these different ways that you can colour up an image. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Until then, happy crafting. And if you have any questions, drop me a line. I love to be able to connect with people. <laughs> Bye.